Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another Monday morning Bible study slash teaching session. I'll be going to begin with an opening prayer, and I would just like to invite you uh, to bow with me as I lead us in this prayer. Uh, let us pray. Father, thank you so much for a brand new day. We give you all of the praise, the honor, and the glory. We thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. As we meditate upon it this morning to this teaching session, may you please be with the speaker, be with each one of us, help us to be attentive and to receive your word with gladness so that it will bring forth fruit. We ask that the spirit of God will preside over our entire meeting. And we pray and ask all of these blessings in Jesus' name and let God's people say, Amen. A warm welcome is extended to each and every one, whether you are joining from YouTube or Zoom this morning. I can see that uh, we have several persons with us on YouTube. Um, you can see the messages inside the chat. Uh, right now, we currently have we currently have a total of. Currently have a total of 25 devices connected on YouTube. I want to say good morning and welcome to the owners of these 25 devices. And if there's anyone else uh, tuning along with you on YouTube, we want to also say welcome and good morning to them also. On Zoom, we have currently uh, 78 participants. We also would like to go ahead and say good morning and welcome to the owners of those devices, along with any others who might be listening in alongside you. Welcome, welcome, welcome from the entire team of the Long Island District, which consists of myself, Sister Jessica, Sister Carla, Elder Warren Rogers, Sister Linda Gibson, Sister Marie Martin, Sister Maxine McDonald, and Brother Akia, who is also known as Dwayne Daly Jr. Welcome, welcome, welcome. At this time, we're going to move into our scripture reading. Our scripture reading for this morning will be coming to us uh, from Sister Raquel Darville. Sister Raquel Darville is going to be reading James 1, 22 to 25. Uh, please let us read along with her. I'm going to get the words up on the screen. And uh, let's go ahead and read along as Sister Raquel from the Stephen Seventh-day Adventist Church leads us in this scripture reading. Good morning. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in the glass. For he, be, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. He was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Here ends the scripture reading. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister for reading that for us. The pleasure is mine to invite our presenter for this morning. And she is certainly no stranger for us. She's no stranger to us. Uh, she is a member of the Living Word Seventh-day Adventist Church in New York. And she was baptized into that church in 2020. Uh, as a matter of fact, she began visiting that church during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, those who know her from New York, they would recognize her coming to church on her, her bicycle. Uh, she loves the word of God. She loves to share the word of God with other people. And she also loves the Sabbath fellowships. One of her favorite Bible verses is John 4, verse 34, which says, Jesus saith unto them, 
My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Of course, I'm speaking of none other than Sister Marie Martin. As she prepares to come to us, let's just say a prayer and ask that the Lord will use her for his glory and use her to bless his people. Before she comes, however, we're going to have a special item of music by Brother Bruno and Sammy Darvel. They're going to be singing for us this morning, My Maker and My King. Brother Bruno is the father and he's singing with his son, Sammy Darvel. So please be blessed as they lead us in this song at this time. My maker and my king, to thee my all I owe. Thy sovereign bounty is the spring whence all my blessings flow. Thy sovereign bounty is the spring whence all my blessings flow. The creature of thy hand, on thee alone I live. My God, thy benefits demand more praise than I can give. My God, thy benefits demand more praise than I can give. Lord, what can I impart when all is thy before? Thy love demands a thankful heart, the gift of less of war. Thy love demands a thankful heart, the gift. Alas, how poor! Oh, let thy grace inspire my soul with strength divine. Let every word and each desire and all my days be thine. Let every word and each desire and all my days be thine. Amen. Amen. How wonderful was that singing um, to the Darvel family? Praise God. All right. So I'm about to share my screen. I want to thank Pastor Yon Dorset for that introduction and want to thank everyone for their time and attention. All right, we're going to begin with a word of prayer, and I'm just going to ask persons to join me in prayer. As before we start, we want to pray and ask God for his leading and guidance in every single thing. So let us pray at this time. Just get in my screen to be set and ready for us. All right. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much for waking us up this morning. It's not us waking ourselves up or the alarm clock. We thank you for your goodness and your grace for taking us this far. Father, I'm asking you for forgiveness of sins and cleansing from all unrighteousness. Father, I'm relying on you to lead and guide this as we go into your word. Help us to understand divine things. Have your Holy Spirit fill us and lead in every way possible. In Jesus' way, um, name I pray. Amen and amen. All right. Again, I want to say good morning to everyone on YouTube and on Zoom. We just did our opening prayer. And, um, you know, it's wonderful that we are in this book, um, 
the Adventist home and we're looking at chapter one, um, the atmosphere of heaven. And I was really touched um, by what we've studied um, so far. And let us just go into our review. And um, in the review, we see that families are, are the heart of the church. And, um, and that's so important for us to remember that families are the heart of the church. We also see that society and the world is composed of families. So if you break down the society and the world, you find families, right? So the heart of the community, the, um, of the church, and of the nature, uh, no, and of the nation is the household. That's the roots. So when you go down to the core, the nitty gritty, and if you even go further, um, families are composed of individuals. But our focus today. Um, is on families, and we see how important family is. Um, I don't know if how many persons know, but um, have you ever for Christmas or a gift or during the holiday times when I was younger, um, my family would um, sometimes do a, a prank where they um, put your, there's a small gift, but they put it in a small box. So you'd have to open multiple boxes to get to the present. So this is an example here. And persons might wonder, what, what is this? So um, this happened a few times um, when I was younger where it was a small gift. So when you look at the society, the community, the church, you can see that it is composed of families. And that is when you're going to the core and going to the root. We're gonna first look at Christian influence in the family, Christian influence in the family. Every Christian family should illustrate to the world the power and excellence of Christian influence. Parents should realize their accountability to keep their homes free from every taint of moral evil. And that is, and that is so important because we know that um, Christ doesn't deal with evil or sin. He, he doesn't like it right? He, he doesn't want us to continue. Yes, Jesus saves us and he saves us. It's not anything that we have done. Jesus decided, saved each one of us. And if we accept him by faith, we are saved. But God does not want us to continue in a life of sin. Um, and this is so important that every household, every Christian household Especially, um, especially if there are young persons involved, the parents should realize their accountability to keep their homes free from every taint of moral evil, everything that will draw away God that so that the spirit of God won't dwell there. And this is so important. And some of the ways in which we can remember this in the word of God, if we go to Psalms 1, uh, verse 1 said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. It is so important to keep our families, to keep everything safe, um, especially that unit, that family unit that we have. Our home should be a symbol of heaven, um, especially um, the head of the household, the males, they're supposed to lead and direct their family according to God's word. And this is so important for us to have a a man of God, a woman of God, and even ungodly children. Uh, we can remember this in the promise of Matthew 5, 14 to 16. God says, ye are the light of the world. A city is set on a, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So God is the one that gets the glory when he see, when persons can see Christ living in your home, they're saying that something is different about your family. Something is different about your home. And this is why Christian influence in the family is so important. Um, and, um, and it's only by God's grace. And this is why a house should be a house of prayer, a house of um, coming together, a house of love, because God is love. And that's where when we're abiding in Christ, we are able to show forth the fruits of the spirit. Holiness to God at home. Holiness to God at home. Holiness to God is a 
um, pervade um, is to pervade the home. Parents and children are to endure themselves to cooperate with God. They are to bring their habits and practices into harmony with God's plan. So this is not we're making up as we're going. We God has given us his word. He said to study to show thyself approved. He has given us his commandments. He's given us his word for us to understand him. Yes, we are saved. Um, God um, saved us. That's justification. But there is a sanctification process, which we'll um, touch on um, very soon. So holiness, holiness, that is what God is made of. So if we are supposed to be children of God, then our household will be holy as well, where um, angels would love to abide and to come by. And our children, you would want to train up a child. A child will not naturally just know how uh, I am safe or um, just know that, hey, you're going to be holy. You have, they have to educate. So parents and children are to educate themselves to cooperate with God. We are supposed to be studying daily, learning more about God. Um, um, his word is when you, and it's um, something that my family mentioned to me recently was that um, they say that the pastor keep learning more about God and they found that strange. I was like, that's how it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to be stagnant. Our love for each other not supposed to be stagnant. Our love uh, for each other is supposed to be growing daily and daily. Um, um, it doesn't stop. Um, the world, you know, they may have a cap on it, but it grows. It grows more and more. And I just find that amazing. God, I, you know, I love you. And I was like, I love you even more now. How is this possible? And it's because we have a growing love, uh, a growing appreciation and, a, and, a, and a, um, um, keep learning as well. Um, so that is wonderful. Now we're going to look at scientification, scientification. The family relationship should be sanctifying in its influence. Christian homes established and conducted in the accordance with God's plan are a wonderful help in performing, um, in forming Christian character, right? And we know that the character that we have is something that will stay with us. And um, we're not going to be like, oh, when I go to heaven, I'll get this character. God wants us. God doesn't want God wants to change us now. And I just love when he saved the woman at the well, um, or and when he saved anyone, he doesn't say go and sin a little bit or um, sin sometimes. He says go and sin no more. And he's he's not going to tell us something that he's not going to help us with. God is helping us each step of the way. And if we fall, we do not stay down. We get back up. And sometimes persons like to look at falls. Um, and, and look at when persons fall, but we're supposed to be helping each other and sharpening iron, sharpening iron. And um, this is how amazing God love is that, you know, when a, when, um, when a sheep goes astray, he goes running after the one that goes astray. But some of us take time. Sometimes we don't go after them and, and tell them to come back to God, knowing that that option is not, not, that, not the way. But God goes after the one sheep that goes astray. So sanctification, God is molding us day by day into his image. Yes, we might not be there, but when we are, when once we are at one place and one part of our life, like last year, I don't expect to be at that same place I was last year, this year. I supposed to be growing by God's grace, learning and basking in God's glory. And, and the more I learn about God, I see, I see how far I am from the mark. And the more I have to rely and depend on God. God. And this is how our families are to be. We're supposed to be depending on God daily, asking him to lead and direct and to show us how to, um, you know, how, how to, how to help our, how to be in our household, how to be with our kids. And not every household is the same. Um, you know, we have, yes, we, the, um, the church or the world is made up of families, but you might, might, some homes might, you know, there's a nuclear family. Some homes might not have a, a, a father or a mother or any or child, but nevertheless, God wants to abide in our homes. Um, so that is very important. And as the scripture reading says, God does not want us to just hear his word. He wants us to um, to do his word, you know, not just to be heirs only, but to be doers of his word and being that light, as we mentioned earlier. So everyone can see and everyone would want to say what 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 is it about this family? What is it? And they would see that God is at the head. And it's so amazing that when we have God at the head, we come closer together. Um, it, it God brings us closer together when we each person, each one of us have God at the head of the household. 
Um, I also want to um, to mention um, First Thessalonians 4, and I'm going to read verses um, 1 to 4. Furthermore, um, that we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, know ye ought to walk and to please God, so he would abound more and more, right? Um, you abound more and more, for you know, for you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that he should abstain from fornication. So even though God is working on us, he, he tells us to abstain from certain things. He doesn't want us to do certain things. That's that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, and it continues. So that is such a wonderful lesson for each and every single one of us. The spirit of Christ at home. The spirit of Christ at home, and this is so important. The first work to be done in a Christian home is to see that the spirit of Christ abides there. And I just and I just love that um, because without the spirit of God, we can do nothing. Um, we, 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 you know, there's something that God does that we cannot do. We can't, we can't even save ourselves. And, and we don't, when we pray, we don't know how to pray as we ought to. The spirit has to help us, our interpret, our sends it up for us. So this is so important for us that we want the spirit of God to dwell in our homes and to be in our hearts. All right. So, um, as it says, the first work to be done in a Christian home is to see that the spirit of Christ abides there. And that every member of the household may be able to take their cross and follow where Jesus leads the way. We are followers of Christ. Christ is leading us and we are supposed to be following him. We cannot go on our own desire, our own, whatever, our own inclination. We cannot lean on our own understanding. In everything, we have to acknowledge Christ. We have to seek ye first the kingdom of God. And now make sure that the spirit is leading us. The spirit is there willing to help each and one of us when we cry out from a broken and a contrite heart, God will not despise. So it is very important that we make sure that the spirit of Christ abides in our home and dwells there and stays there and help us because we don't want, there's another spirit and we don't want the enemy He's not welcome in my home. You know, it says, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. If we look at Noah, for example, right? If we go to Genesis 6, we saw that um, Noah, when God saw what was happening in the old world, he he was not happy. He He was not happy with what was happening there. So he called Noah. And I'm just looking at verse 13, and I'll just read in our earrings. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth, right? Um, and, he, and he gave Noah instruction, make thee an ark of um, gooper wood. Room shall thou make in the ark and shall, and shall pitch it within and without, um, without with pitch. And this is the um, the fashion which thou shalt make it. So God is God is specific. He gives us instruction, and in every single thing you see that God directs. Even in the sanctuary, He has measurements. And if we go into God's word, we see that God is specific. He, there's a way in which He wants to um, us to raise our kids. He says, um, you know, to teach them diligently unto our children, um, to spend time. He wants us to study. There's instruction in the word of God. God doesn't say He doesn't, He's yes, He's helping us, but He has also given us a brain and a mind to help ourselves. So, and God gives us instruction. He wants us to follow His instruction, um, just like with Adam and Eve. Each one of us, well, they had um, the option either to obey God or to disobey. And we have a choice, even though we, when God um, saves us and we are cleansed, and he now says, are you going to follow me? Are you going to stay connected to me? Are you going to abide in me? As in John 15, we say the importance of being connected and our family needs to be connected. You can imagine if we are supposed to be a branch and we're, and we're apart um, from the the, the brand we're not connected to the vein or um of the of the of the tree 
we're not rooted. We're not rooted in Christ. We, we'll, we'll be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. We have to be in the word of God. And God wants us, um, when we are connected with him, then we can be able to produce the fruits, the fruits of the spirits as in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, that God wants us to show forth. And I will just continue. So he gave him specific instruction what he's supposed to do. And there's this, um, I just love in verse um, Genesis 6, 22, is that what did Noah do? In verse, it says, thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. We are supposed to be following God's word. And, and as God tells us something, um, you know, and God is speaking us through his word and we're supposed to obey him. Um, so we, and, and as we continue, if we look now in um, Genesis 7, 23, and every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, everything was destroyed. And when you see God, God didn't just do it immediately. You know, Noah um, had to build the ark and it took time. And this is how loving and God is. God has given us time. Um, to get our houses in our order, to get our families together and to be living for him. He told us that he's coming again for us and he's coming for our ready people. So we should be getting our house in order. He wants us um, to abide in him, stay connected, stay connected to his word and to follow his instruction. Because he did also remind us that um, just like in the day of Noah, so it's going to be in the end. Right. Um, and then let me just go quickly to Second Peter 2.5. 2 Second Peter 2.5. All right. So this is what happened. And God and um spared not the old world, and this is why I refer to them as old world, but save Noah, the eight person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in um bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. God doesn't like ungodly and no ungodly, and this is why the sanctification or um, the spirit of Christ should be at our in our homes and abiding in our homes and dwelling there and and, and having such a wonderful air for God's God to dwell there to be in harmony there. Hebrews eleven um, seven also goes into a little bit about the faith that we should have and um, um, in in God and and that helps us in our Christian journey and it says by faith. Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. So you don't, we, we might, we, we, God tells us of the different promises in his word. We might not see it right now, but we know it's going to happen because God's word is a guarantee. He's faithful and God is not, God does not lie. Um, um, so it says being warned of God of things not seen as yet move with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house his house. So God is speaking to someone right now, telling them they need to get their house. He didn't just, he, he, he did preach to everyone. He wanted everyone to be saved, but praise the Lord. There's something different with, no, um, with Noah's house. Why is it that Noah's house was saved? Because he set an example. He had, um, he was the head of the house and God was speaking directly to him and he was getting his house in order. And there was an example or standard that was set by Noah. And this is why God said that he, when he saw him, he saw that he was righteous. And then he spoke to him like, I'm, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want. And, and Noah followed his instructions. So he, um, 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 as it continues in Hebrews 7, 11, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by by the which he commanded the word um condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith this is very very important to us and i just want to contrast it with lot you know um lot on the other hand he he was not um, he, yes, he, he, he knew God and he had a relationship with God, but we have to be careful with where we send, um, as our carry our house, like where we live and where we go to abide. We have to make sure, as it says, the spirit of God is leading us. Um, the spirit of God might lead you, um, to the cities or wherever it is, or to the country or wherever it is, make sure that God is leading you, not you being, um, thinking of, um, the better pastures or something else, but let God um, detect and lead you where you should live. Um, we see that Noah now went into the city. Um, he became wealthy as as um as we as we are reading the um as I read in the spirit of prophecy. But not only that, that because of all the evil that was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah, he was not help, he was not happy there. 
Um, and then he was even at uh, the outside when the angels came. He was like, come stay with me. He wanted to protect them because he knew about it. And look at it. Was he able to save his house like Noah, right? Noah saved his house, but Lot was not able to. And that then there's a reason for that because also Lot did not set such a standard as Noah. Noah, on the other hand, his family followed him. Lot, on the other hand, he went, carried his family into a place that was not safe. And as we as we looked up earlier in Psalms in Psalms one, right? We're not supposed to. Yes, God wants us to um, to um, to share the gospel, go everywhere, and to share the gospel. But we're not there to um, to continue, to be in that lifestyle with them. We're here to there to share the gospel with them, um, to to sh- be a light unto them, to bring them to Christ, but not to um, to do the same things that they're doing, and to um, and then to to lose and let their influence us us because at the end of it, um, Lot's family. Um, they were not saved. His two daughters, and then their two daughters were still tainted by well, how they were brought up in that community. And that we saw what happened at the end where the daughters slept with their father. So those are things that we have to keep in mind. And we have to remember Noah's example, you know, that um, he prepared the ark for the saving of his household. We have to be very careful with where we go. And we know how we are saved. I just want to um, share with us Ephesians 2, um, 8 to 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So God, God saves us. And then also, and it's nothing that we can do. Our, our righteousness are like filthy rags. But then guess what? God didn't save us now to continue in sin, as I mentioned earlier, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. God wants us to be that example. Um, and, and, and we have to be very careful because you can be grounded in God today. And this is why we have to work out our own salvation with fear and, and trembling. You can be firm. I, I, I am looking at, um, I'm recalling the Bible study that I, we did recently on um on um king saul he was connected it was like if saul among the prophets persons were wondering what was he was handpicked by god he was supposed to be doing the work of god but he drifted away we have to be very careful that that we do not lose our connection and our families and 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 per, we, are, we can influence our families and our household we have to be very careful um in that regard we know that um we are children of god Right. So we have our household and we are also God's children. And um, we saw that uh, even if we look at um, the example of that God um, in Hebrews 12, 6 to 11, for for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So God does not leave us. Um, he corrects us in a loving way. And this is how we are supposed to be loving with each other. If ye endure ch- um, chastening, God dealeth with you as his sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But he, if ye be without chast- um, chastisement, wherefore are all partakers, then are ye all bastards and not sons. Furthermore, ye have um, ye have had fathers of your flesh which correct, corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they um, verily for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. And that's talking about the holiness that we mentioned earlier, about that holiness to God at home in our families. And God is, a, we have a holy God. No, and now no ch- um, chastening for the present seeming to be joyous. It's not going to be nice when God corrects us and um, at times, or even when we're going through the fire or are molding us through our test and the trials, it's not going to be joyous. But um, nevertheless, afterward, it yielded a peaceable fruit of righteousness, right? Unto them which are exercised thereby. We want to, um, to make sure that we want God to be molding us um, into his image and correcting us where we go. Um, astray we know that Abraham he didn't he didn't reach such a um a, in his faith just by that he at one point he lied um but we see how God works on us 
you know, day by day and molding us more and more into his image. And by, by God's grace, each one of us will be growing daily. Um, and then we also want to remember Matthew 18, 3, and, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. And we also want to see, look at Jesus' example. Jesus always did the will of his father. He also said, um, as, as mentioned, my one of my favorite Bible verses, John 4.34, Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Um, so we are supposed to be um, connecting with Christ and, and following his leading. And Jesus even said, to, and as a young person, if a young person is, is here online, you know, your, fa your our, fa our family um, wants, our, your family, just your individual family, your church family, we want to see you do well. And, um, and you should be also in the word because Christ know the word. And look at what he said, he said, and he said unto them, how is it that he sought me? Wist it not that I must be about my father's business? So Christ also has to be about his father's business. All right. So let's just continue. Um, now, I would like to, to share a testimony, a little testimony, how influence, um, how we can be influenced. Um, so um, I was staying by my friend's house um, recently, and I she had her son there, and I'll just call him Matt for um, for short. And he, uh, I didn't know that he was paying so much attention to me. I know that they were addicted to video games, but I would my favorite hymn is "Wonderful Words of Life," and I will be singing it over and over again, even when I'm when I'm, you know, washing the dishes or sweeping, but he was watching video games. And one, one day I just heard him watching the video games and he just started singing, singing the song. I was singing it and he started singing. I was like, Matthew, how you know that song? He's like, you always sing it. And I was like, wow. So he was like, yes. And he was singing it with me. And every time he hears me sing, he starts singing it. I never taught him. I never took the time to like, this is the song. He just been observing me. And was able to start singing that song. And then I start teaching him some Bible verses. He's very good at Bible verses too. And I start teaching him some Bible verses. And um, and it was so wonderful to see, to see that even though I didn't take the time, he was observing my observing me and was able even um, you know, learn that hymn. Um, because that he every time he sees me, he was like, What's sing your favorite hymn? Um, and or you will sing it with me or you will say a Bible verse with me because he was observing my behavior and I didn't even realize it because he was he so he, to me he looked so focused into the video games that I didn't realize that he was still observing um, observing me at the end of it so let us just um, do a quick review um, just to know we know that um, Christ is coming again all right and and we, we need to make sure that our house is in order. Um, if no one else wants to be saved, we need to make sure that our household is saved, like what Noah did. Like, we need to be that example. You don't want to just be hearers, but doers, because persons, other persons are watching us and observing us. As Matthew was observing me, I didn't even realize it. You know, he seems so distracted. So other person might be so focused on something else, but they can see you. They are, they, they see you and observe you. So that um, that's a good lesson for us. Um, so we need to make sure that we keep our eyes on Jesus and not to get distracted. We need to remember that Christ, um, Christian influence in the family. We need to make sure that God is abiding in our home and that we stay connected, hold, holding, holiness to God at home. Um and also sanctification, we need to allow God to change and also the, um, the spirit of God to be in our in our homes. We need to make sure that um, by the grace of God and praying, praying that the, um, the spirit of God is at our home. And the first work um, to be done in a Christian home is to see that the spirit of Christ abides there. That's one of the first works that we need to, um, um, to make sure. And by God's grace, he's helping us with all of this. We need to remember that God is coming again and he wants us to be ready. And then I just want to leave this Bible verse, Matthew 24, 20, um, 37 to 39. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. For as ye in the days that were before the flood, they, um, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered 
that no entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of God, of, of man be. We need to remember that God is coming again. We can, you know, we don't want to get distracted by the different things that are happening in the world. Um, yes, they have their place, but paramount, we need to be putting God first and we make sure that God is put first in our home because we want our families to be saved. If no one else wants to listen to the message, by the grace of God, our family, by us setting a good example, lot example, he went, he took his family's place where he shouldn't have, and that had an influence on them. Even his wife was even had her heart so much on her children. Our minds are ultimately, you know, if he that love it, father, mother, more than me, is not worthy of me. We need to be making sure that God is first in each one of our hearts individually. We need to be teaching our family and our children about the love of Christ. And um, and God has given us his word. And God is going to correct us and guide us, but don't look at it in a bad way. God is there to help us. So let us be ready and make our households be ready and to be saved by God's grace. Let us pray to close. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much for your amazing love and your word that is so sweet. Father, we want to be ready. So we consecrate ourselves to your first action, you to take control of us and our household and also of the world. Father, we, we are praying that persons will... Um, open up their hearts to you and receive you before it's eternally too late. Thank you again for this time that we spent in your word can help us to reflect and meditate on it. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. I know that we're certainly grateful for that teaching session, that Bible study. I was especially blessed by the biblical illustrations uh, that God has presented to us as warnings for those of us who have families. And I appreciate how the Lord allows Sister Marie to continue to remind us of, low, of Lot's situation because his family was in that negative environment. They did not leave from that environment untainted. And so we praise the Lord for Sister Marie availing herself to lead us in that study based on the Adventist home. As we transition at this point, we are going to now lift up the various participants and the requests that have come in. And I would like to invite you just to bow your heads with me. And please, you can also feel free to use this time to pray for your own families, your own requests. Let's spend the next few minutes just talking to the Lord. Father, we praise you. You sent Jesus to die for us. And we thank you that he was resurrected, and the fact that he was resurrected, that he has that resurrection power, means, Lord, that we can also tap into that power, and we can become new creatures. We do not have to follow the ways of sin and death, but we can be resurrected into new creatures because of what Christ has done. We thank you for his shed blood. The life is in the blood. Lord, the same... Uh, life that he had, that victorious life. Lord, when we trust in the efficacious power of his blood, we too can become victors. Lord, we pray that you will forgive us of all sin. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to be truly repentant, humble, ready to acknowledge our wrongs and not to justify our wrongs. Lord, please cleanse me of all sin and create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. Do the same for every participant. And may this prayer ascend as sweet incense. May you hear and answer according to your will. Father, each family on this line, you would love to see them saved into your kingdom. Each single household, it will break your heart that one of us is missing, that one of these households are missing. And so we just want to pray that firstly and foremostly, you remind us and you teach us how to master the art of setting our minds on heavenly things, not getting distracted and bogged down by this temporary world. Father, please uh, help us to seek first your kingdom and its righteousness, knowing that all of our needs shall be added unto us. We pray that you will please supply the needs of every single family, whether on YouTube or on Zoom this morning. We pray, Lord, that you will take care of the needs of the families of Arnadel Wiley, Yvonne Adderley, Esme Seymour, Viola Albrey, Abby and Michelle Newman, Portia Barnett, 
Sister Cynthia Lightburn and Enola Daly, Tamara Johnson, Dania Wallace, Tamika Finley, Lita Walters, Maxine Rollins, Nora Mountain, Abby Jack, Elder Marcus Bain, Sister Vernice and Ashford, Sister Marlon, Mark and Maisha, Jackie Skippings, Eric and Corletta Roll, Dorothy Hanfield, Janet Carey, Denise Moxie, Sister Barbara Wilson, Irma Mitchell, Martha Minnis, Pastor Mark Ewan and Sister Tawisha, Dr. Joseph and Sister Ethel Evans, Melvern Roll, Gloria Blake, Bernadette Roll, Charmaine Ewing, Debbie Abdulia Wally, Barbara Dwyer, Alicia Ramming, Sister Patsy Delati Budea Coburn, Sister Justina Knowles, Peggy Seymour, Angela Ferguson, Jenny Wilson, Barbara Tannis, Bernadette Hunter, Terry Carleen Peart, Joy Kahn, Marina Bethel, Janet McDonald, Sharon Miller, Aladina Oliver, Clotilda Gardner, Vernita Thompson. We are praying for the families of each and every one of these individuals, Lord. We also want to place into your hands the families of Sister Marie, Miss Elaine, and Omar, Brother Henry Monker and Sister Naomi, Lorraine Evans, Arnold Clark, Elaine and Patricia Crichton, Alicia, Anastasia Simone, Brother Andrew Hart, Anita Hudson, Antoinette Miller Wilson, Betty Tinker, Betty Williams, Blaniva Brown, Elder Warren, Sister Carla, Karen and Cara, Carmetta, Charlotte Culmer, Cheryl Bodie, Clara McPhee, Clarence and Charlotte Bryce, Damani David, Darnell Johnson, Delrose Thompson, Derek Sally and Dorica Bodie, Elder Dawn and Sister Olga Major, Donna Roberts, Doreen Butler, Amanda Lundy Ferguson, Peter Brown, Edith Roach, Elder Orval, Sister Maxine and Jerome McDonald, Ella May and Macario Blyden, Elder Winston and Sister Esteli Nash, Francita Tashina, Tashika Stewart, Freeman Kelly, Enid Roll, Brother Godfrey Humes and Sister Jalitha, George and Michelle Wells, Greta Kemp, Hartman and Stacy Strand, Pastor Jeremiah, Sister Joan, the family and the team at the Holy Land Replica, Ingrid Moore, Elva Ritchie, Erna Kirby, Ivan and Sharon Roll, Jackie Cartwright, Jacqueline, Alexander and family, Janet Patterson Curtis, Janice Johnson, Janice Coakley, Tony, Brandy, Jada, Jaden, Pierre, Joan Delancey, Joanne Wallace, Julian Sr., Julian Jr., Sammy, Selena, Issa, Ian, Joy, Julie Davis, Catherine Ferguson, Elder Kevin and Sister Sharon Robinson, La Merci Yasante, Lena Monroe, Sister Johan, Lee Strawn, Leona Morris, Elder Lester and Sister Cindy Stewart, Lillian Rule, Linda Gibson and Jonathan, Laureen and Clyde Miller, Lyndon, and Janet Roll, Maidon Ramming, Magnell Thompson, Uncle Jerry and Macklin, GJ Sarai and Jeremiah, Sister Marsha Walker, Mariette Ferguson, Sister Marquina, Kenria, Zelda Pratt, Elder Marvis David, Sister Melanie Jones, Jason and Arthur Neek, Mella Roll, the Melvins family, Mo McClymont, Sister Maureen Cooper, Natalie Markland, O'Clay Thomas, Olga and Natelka Cargill, Olive Thomas, Olive Miller, Onise Falord, Opal Morant, Pansy Brown, Patricia Brown, Patricia Roberts, Elder Patrick and Sister Leonie Wilson, Dr. Rhonda Carter, Sister Patricia, Rebecca, Rita Bennett, Roy and Jacqueline Brown, Ruth Walks, Sam Katrina and Sam Jr., the Samsung user, Sandra Pierre Felix, Sharon Brown, Sharon St. Bryce, Shirley Parker Smith, Elder Sydney and Sister Pearl Sylvester, Sister Delmar, Sister Bloomfield Clark, her three children and grandchildren, 
Leuven, Calvin, Calvina, Calvante, Tamika Marshall Coley, Thelma Evans, Thelma Young, Violet Evans Roll, Sister Zemreen Brown, Karen, Keyshawn, and Kiran. Loving Father, we just want to place each and every one of these families into your hand. Lord, we are praying and asking that you will also answer those unspoken requests from Pastor Samuel Miller and the family, as well as the family of Theresa Martin. I'll be with them as well. Lord, you see all of the many requests coming in on YouTube. You see all of those requests coming in on Zoom. We are just asking that you will please hear and answer each one. Father, I also, of course, want to place into your hands my dear wife and our daughter, Charity. Uh, please bless our little family. We pray for our relatives and siblings and parents as well. Mr. Michael, Miss Veronica, Doran and Shauna, Kara and Kaylee, Tia, Omar, Nathaniel, Vanessa, Aunt Cynthia, Grandma Iva, my parents, Sydney and Barbara Dorset, Ellsworth, Yanthe, Mariah, Aki, Nathan, and Gabrielle. Dear Lord, please help all of our families where we cannot help ourselves. We pray that you'll help us to apply where uh, necessary the various principles that were shared uh, by Sister Marie this morning. And Father, for the sake of time, I won't go through all of the specific requests, but I know that you have seen and noted each one. And we just want to come into agreement, praying that you will hear and answer each one according to your will. Uh, we remember those in our midst who have recently lost loved ones. We think of Sister Jackie Skippings. We are praying for her and the family and all other families going through difficult times. We pray for all of those who are traveling, such as the Rogers family. May you bring them back safely. Um, when it's time for Sister Cynthia and Sister Nola to return, we pray for their safe travels as well. We pray for our conferences, our local churches, our administrators of the conference, all of our leaders, the world church. Father, we pray that you will do a new thing, bring revival and reformation in us. And so, Lord, we just want to pray and ask all of these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say thank you by faith for having heard and thank you for having answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for all of your prayers, those of you who were praying with your mics muted. We're now going to have Sister Naomi Monker lead us in the prayer of thanksgiving as we conclude our meeting for this morning. So once again, let us just bow as Sister Naomi leads us in this final prayer. Therefore, be also ready, for in such an hour ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Heavenly Father, you and you alone are our God and soon coming King. We thank you for keeping us in our sound minds and allowing us to see a wonderful weekend. For we know that if the enemy had his way, we would not still be here today. We pray this morning, Lord, that you'll forgive us for the sins we may have done in thoughts, words, and deeds. Heal all of those not feeling well and comfort families mourning the loss of their loved ones. Thank you, Lord for providing our daily bread and for giving us a much needed breakthrough in our finances. Lord, bless and keep us, our nation 
and our people safe. And we praise you for the blood of Jesus that has been applied over our names and to us, giving us victory over the enemy. And as we look around, signs of the times are everywhere. May we all seek to set our houses in order. For ready or not, the Lord is soon to come. The Lord is soon to come and the wages of sin is still death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. It was a blessing to be here again this morning. Uh, we do not take it for granted what the Lord has allowed us to experience. And we just want to give him thanks for each one who ministered in some way, shape, or form this morning. Uh, we firstly want to give God thanks for Sister Carla Rogers, who was instrumental in bringing a team together to minister for us this morning. Uh, we also would like to give God thanks for Sister Raquel, who read our scripture reading. We give God thanks for her husband and son, Brother Bruno and Sammy, who sang so beautifully hymn number 15, My Maker and My King. We are truly grateful for Sister Marie sharing those wonderful principles in that study this morning. And last but not least, we are so grateful for Sister Naomi Monker expressing gratitude to the Lord on our behalf. So may God richly bless each and every one of you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your ministry and service for the Lord. There might be someone on YouTube or right here on Zoom who has recently celebrated a birthday or who might even be celebrating a birthday today. We are so grateful that the Lord has blessed you with such another milestone and may he continue to shine his light upon you and bless you tremendously spiritually, physically, financially, in every dimension, so that you will continue to be a witness for him. Happy birthday. Uh, there might be some couples who are celebrating their wedding anniversary today. We also want to celebrate along with you. Marriage is such a beautiful thing, and you're still being together as a testimony that God is in the midst, because we know how many families give up in their marriages, but the fact that God has blessed you with another year is no small thing. May he continue to allow you and your spouse to be drawn together in cords of love. And finally, there are those in our midst who have recently lost loved ones. We want to remind you of the promise of Christ in Matthew 5, verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. May you continue to trust in Christ and may you feel his comfort and strength during this time of your bereavement from the entire team of the Long Island District Prayer Ministry. And we now go into our song, wishing that God would be with each and every one of you until we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide uphold you. Sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet. God be with you till we meet. Again. God be with you till we meet again. Neath his wings protecting hide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet Jesus.
Jesus be till we meet, till we meet. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils become found. God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet, till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again, till we Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. Yes, may God be with you until we meet again. To each and every one present on the line and your families, we want to leave the blessing of Numbers 6, 24 to 26 with you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We already passed the seven o'clock mark this morning. And so we want to invite those who are impressed to give closing remarks to be extremely brief, but we still want to allow you to um, have the freedom to to share what is on your heart. But again, we don't want to um, stay on the line too long this morning. So is there anyone who would like to share? You have the freedom to do so at this time. Good morning, everyone. Zoom, YouTube, the entire Long Island district of this prayer line this morning. I wish you God's richest blessings today. I want to thank you, Sister Marie, for that powerful, powerful lesson you gave us this morning. And to Pastor Yon for lifting us up in prayer. We ask that as we go today, we remember that God is going to take care of us. Sweet promises given to all who believe. Behold, I come quickly, mine own to receive. The promises sure that, sorry. Hey, the promises sure. To sleep not as to others, be watchful and wait. Yes, this is a hope, has built on his word, the glorious appearing of Jesus, my Lord, of promises all. It stands as the sum. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast till I come. Hold fast till I come. Sweet promise of heaven. The kingdom restored. To you shall be given. Come enter my joy, sit down on my throne. Bright crowns are in waiting. Hold fast till I come. I love you all. Blessings, everyone.
Good morning, everyone. I just want to give thanks to Marie for such a lovely presentation. It is so important to talk about the family during this time because families are struggling and going through all different sort of things. And to bring it from the word and present it like that, I just want to thank her and to see how she is so uh, knowledgeable about that. And she's studying well, she's doing well. I just pray for her ministry and she continue to grow. She grow from strength to strength. And thank you, Pastor Vaughn, for all your messages and everything that you bring on a regular basis. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're grateful for those kind words from Sister Naomi and that wonderful hymn, Hold Fast Till I Come. Thank you also, Elder Sydney Sylvester, for your kind words. Uh, Sister Marielle, I noticed that your mic is unmuted. Would you like to share as well? Oh, good morning. I typed it in the chat instead. I just wanted to thank you sis, and Sister Marie and the team. And Sister Marie is always doing a great job for building up the kingdom of God. And what I like about it, she's building up the kingdom of God through the knowledge of the word and not just somebody say so. And I love that. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see, I'll hear you tomorrow morning. Amen. Amen. We praise the Lord. Yes, we concur with you, Sister Mariette. We appreciate your kind words and we are truly grateful for what the Lord is doing through Sister Marie. Amen. Well, all right, everyone. I think that's all of those who would like to share. And so we're just going to take the time to conclude our meeting for this morning. Thanks to each and every one of you for your prayers and for your presence. It's always a, a, a blessing to have you in this virtual Christian fellowship. May God be with you and your family until we meet again. God be with you till we meet again.